Okay, let's uh, let's replace pain with accuracy. I think that's it. Oh, wow. get the punch for exactly. Well, what do I like about this instrument? Well, um, like the Outmaster 500, we get a lot of things simultaneously, but here we get actually more things. We get the axial length decay, central corneal thickness, central chamber depth, lens thickness, zodiac sign, mother's maiden name, favorite dessert, and shoe size. Okay, and um, the Ks. The Ks are absolutely sublime with this, and we're going to go into that in a little bit more detail. It's something new. Anterior chamber depth is not an estimation by slit, slit image. It's an actual measurement by optical biometry, and also the lens thickness is by optical biometry. The newer generation formulas, like Holiday 2, like Olson, some of the ray tracing technologies require that. The, you have a lot of measurement flexibility. The, the computer and the instrument are completely separate. In fact, the instrument is just connected uh, by a USB cable. Also, the, all of these measurements can be individually accessed and validated by the user, so you can tell exactly if you have something right. So rather than just getting numbers that you're given, you can actually go in, move calipers, and get everything exactly where you want it to be. And as I mentioned, the, the computer and the instrument are separate. This not only has the Holiday 2 formula, but it also has the entire Holiday iWell console, plus access to any program you want to add, like the Olson formula, perhaps some of the ray tracing technology. So instead of just having a, one part of the Holiday iWell console, you actually have the whole thing. And the instrument can talk to it, and it can auto-populate it. But this is what I'm going to focus on right now with parotometry. Now you get a tremendous amount of information. This is with one button, button push for each eye. This is what you get. And these are just the case right here. Okay, so we all, we all know what this is. This is an immersion A scan. Uh, anterior cornea, posterior cornea, anterior lens capsule, posterior lens capsule, vitreal retinal interface. Well, with the LensStar, what it does is it gives you that information looking just like an immersion A scan. So there's your cornea. And of course, you get your central corneal thickness. You get your aqueous depth lens thickness, you get to see the internal limiting membrane and the RPE of the retina, add it all together, and that gives you the axial length. So it's a huge amount of information, and you have access to every single part of this. You can move the calipers wherever you want. If a little spike comes up where it's not supposed to be, you can go ahead and correct it. So here's a, here's a measurement where the operator's actually taken the electronic caliper and put it on the posterior capsule. And you, even, you can even look at individual measurements and sort those out, delete, repeat, pretty much do whatever you, whatever you want. Now one amazing piece of technology is that not only you get the lens thickness, but you actually get to view the internal anatomy of the lens. So you have the anterior lens capsule, the, um, the nuclear cortex interface, all the different things going on within the nucleus, and the posterior lens capsule. We're talking about clear structures here that are either 12 microns thick for the anterior capsule or five microns thick for the posterior capsule. It is actually able to image those. Now, what about, um, what about using lens constants for this? Well, it turns out the optical biometry, the Ks, and the anterior chamber depth for a series of patients are pretty much the same in terms of the spherical equivalent for the Ks, also for the axial length and the ACD. So you can use a lens star, or rather I will master a lens constants for this device as a place to start. What about prior care of refractive surgery? Well, because the Ks are basically the same, the spherical equivalent of the Ks, are the same all the way down to 30 or 29 diopters, you can also use the ASCRS calculator. And there's some work going on right now to have this auto-populate the ASCRS calculator for you. So there's our ASCRS calculator. And the, and the, the methods that we like the most are modified masket, Hagacell, and uh, the Shamus method. Okay, well, let's talk about case. You know, what, what, is, what is it that makes this instrument so much better for keratometry? Well, you know, why did Willie Sutton rob banks? Because that's where the money is. Well, look at where, look where most of your Ks are. They're way down at the lower uh, level. For the T3 through the T9, that's a little bit more than 50% of patients you're going to get, um, uh, you're, you're going to have access to in your patient population. But when you start adding the T2, that 70% of patients are toric uh, candidates. So you need to have some mechanism by which things can be very, very accurate. So. When we do uh, the toric eye well, we don't just get a set of Ks, we have to do two things. First, we have to figure out what are the orientation of the meridians, and what are the power difference between them. This, doing this with a manual keratometer can be difficult, and with the eye master you can have some problems. So why does a manual keratometer work so well? And this is what the manufacturer recommends. Well, if you're off on your axis, you get actually get a picture, and you get told that you're in the wrong place. When you're in the right place, you get a good picture. And so here's the steep axis, or steep meridian, the flat meridian. And what we're looking to do is just tell the power difference between to give us what we need 
for the toric IOL. So with a with the manual keratometer, you actually you're only measuring four places, but there, it turns out that they're the right four places, and it's the right information. Let's take a look at the Owlmaster. How does the Owlmaster work? What's behind the curtain? Well, here's what you have with the Owlmaster. You have six measurement LEDs. They're placed 60 degrees apart. So if you have a, a steep axis that's 39 or 150 degrees, what happens is you have to do tremendous amounts of iteration in order to figure out uh, where you are. So look at look at where the axes are. They're you know they're in the wrong zip code here for each of these uh, measurement devices. Look at the Owlmaster Alma or the Lenstar rather. You end up with you have 32 LEDs in two rings, and you end up with 640 measurements. So if we look at this measurement right here, you can see that the LEDs are pretty much, wherever you are, you're gonna be near a measurement LED. We just put Bob, Bobby Osher, myself, Terry Solomon just published an article in the Journal of Cataract and Practice Surgery showing that this is probably equal to manual keratometry. So let's, let's look at a case. This is the last patient I did before I came here for a toric eye well. So here's, here's Iowa Master, here's Lenstar. Quarter diopter difference, not much difference, and I hear this all the time. But look at the axis, the axis, is quite different. So, you know, why does that matter? Well, the plan B for figuring out the axis is you can take a, an axial map, draw a line straight through the two lobes, and by definition, that's the steep axis. It can't be anything else. So, here's the Iowa Master. We'll say 106 degrees. We'll look at 106 degrees where 106 degrees is. That, again, that's in another zip code. That's not right. Here's the, and why is that? Well, let's go back a little bit here. Okay, well, here's, here's our meridians. You can see that the instrument has to do a fair amount of iteration. For the lens star, it was pretty much exactly where it needed to be. And the lens star has a lot of measurement points, so it's really not an issue. Okay, so let's actually do the calculation. So this is with the Iowa Master, and here's with the lens star. With the Iowa Master, we're gonna calculate for a T6, and for the Iowa Master, we're gonna calculate for a T7. With the uh, lens star case, post off day number one minus a quarter plus a quarter. With the Iowa Master case, we put in a T6. Just by the angular error alone, we're off by a diopter, more than a diopter and a half. By the toric eye well power, we're off by uh, another half diopter. That's over a two diopter error, even though the Ks looked like they were just the same because you were off on the axis. So just in quick summary, I think the Ks on this instrument are spectacular. The axial length measurement capability is the same as the Iowa Master. The numbers come out the same. Um, it's equivalent to manual keratometry, so this is the first validated instrument equivalent to manual keratometry that you can work with the Toric IOL well for, and it's also that's what's recommended uh, by the manufacturer. And with the measurement head and the computer being separate, you can have all sorts of companion software on the computer, just like a regular Windows 7 computer, and the instrument will talk to that, auto-populate things, and you can use all types of stuff. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Thank you.